Imagine a planet where every breath you take electrifies your body like a shot of espresso. The sky above you is an intense shade of blue, while colossal trees stretch towards the heavens, their vibrant green leaves growing at an astonishing rate. Daily exercise becomes a thrill like no other. With the abundance of oxygen, you become a supercharged version of yourself. Running feels effortless as you dart across the landscape, lifting weights that would normally seem impossible. It's as if the world itself is infused with a surge of energy. Everything is moving faster. The wildlife surrounding you is equally affected by this oxygen overload. Animals roam the land in majestic proportions. Their massive frames are propelled by speed and agility. Picture yourself in a pulse-pounding chase with an oxygen-charged cheetah, racing against a predator that could put a Ferrari to shame. Now you may wonder how such a wild scenario could ever be possible. Well, let's see. Oxygen is the powerful fuel that keeps life going. It makes up about 21% of the air we breathe, and every breath we take delivers these tiny molecules to our cells, giving them the energy they need to thrive. Without oxygen, our cells would struggle, and our bodies would fall apart. But that's not all. Oxygen is a superstar that works for all kinds of living things, from tiny bacteria to giant elephants. It's even important underwater, where it enriches the oceans. Amazing creatures like plankton and algae produce lots of oxygen, creating a thriving underwater world. But to fully understand the impact of high oxygen levels on the planet, prepare for a journey back in time. Recently, scientists have made an astonishing discovery. They tested rocks from two different places that were really far apart. And can you believe it? These rocks held tiny pockets of gas that showed how oxygen levels shot up by almost a third in a very short time. It was like a breath of fresh air. So they studied these rocks and found that oxygen levels back then were much higher. Imagine lush landscapes, towering forests, and gigantic swamps that stretched as far as you could see. During the Carboniferous period, oxygen ruled the atmosphere at an impressive 20%, just like today. But over the next 50 million years, its levels shot up to a crazy 35%. Can you imagine what that did? As oxygen surged, something incredible happened. Huge forests grew all over the land, creating a breathtaking green world. And massive swamps took over low-lying areas, making the landscape look surreal and otherworldly. At the same time, carbon dioxide levels dropped. Normally, when things break down, microbes release carbon dioxide into the air. This gas acts like a warm blanket, trapping the sun's heat and raising temperatures. But in the mysterious swamps where these giant plants were buried, the microbes couldn't do their job. The result? The planet got really cold. Who would have thought that a breath of fresh air could have such power? The scientists are still trying to figure out why this happened. But one thing is certain, it wasn't just happening in one place. It was a worldwide phenomenon. It was like the planet was playing a funny game with the climate. But let's go even earlier. We see the first North American dinosaurs making their grand entrance. High oxygen levels are what gave a big boost to the rise of mighty dinosaurs in North America and beyond. Picture tropics filled with the magnificent giant creatures. Obviously, dinosaurs didn't just appear out of nowhere. They took advantage of a changing environment that was perfect for their evolution. Oxygen levels played a huge part in this dinosaur party. As oxygen levels rose, so did the size of these incredible creatures. They started small with predators like Chindosaurus, and soon after, huge dinosaurs like sauropods took over the land. Then, 65 million years ago, dinosaurs disappeared and mammals took over. And here's the interesting part. Mammals never grew as big as dinosaurs. So what's the explanation for this? Mammals, and humans are mammals too, by the way, are special because we can regulate our body temperature. But that comes at a cost. We need a lot of energy to stay warm compared to reptiles and dinosaurs. Dinosaurs didn't bother with temperature control, so they could focus on growing big. The biggest dinosaurs were 10 times larger than the largest mammals. It's like a game of anything you can do, I can do 10 times bigger. Dinosaurs might have had similar limitations with their sizes, but those were much less strict. Before the dinosaurs' extinction, mammals were very small. Many mammal species disappeared along with the dinosaurs. But survivors took advantage of the open ecosystem and rapidly diversified into various body sizes. However, 
After 42 million years of growth, mammals reached a size plateau. This happened on all continents, most likely because of the temperature and land area. Colder environments allowed mammals to grow larger. Balancing body size and heat became challenging. Land area also played a role in sustaining big populations. But making animals bigger isn't the only thing high oxygen can do. This humble gas is a true jack of all trades. It also acts as our loyal bodyguard, protecting us from harmful UV rays and other dangers from space. Without oxygen, we would be defenseless against space threats. Oxygen also has a fascinating role in shaping the weather. It teams up with its other atmospheric buddies to make the sky go wild with tornadoes, hurricanes, and thunderstorms. They mix and mingle in the air, creating just the right conditions for these exciting weather adventures to happen. And these adventures can be dangerous, but they serve an important purpose. They help distribute nutrients and organic matter, carrying soil, leaves, and debris to new places. So what if we decided to mess with nature and crank up the oxygen levels to crazy heights, 30%, 40%, or even 50%? Well, too much of a good thing can become dangerous. Oxygen toxicity is when too much of this gas causes big problems. It's like eating loads of candy. It's fun at first, but soon enough you'll regret it. Surprisingly, an overdose of oxygen can leave you struggling for breath, like a tired dancer in desperate need of a break. At first you might feel a burst of energy, but it doesn't last. Dizziness sets in, as if you've been spinning on the dance floor for hours without stopping. In extreme cases, too much oxygen can even harm your body, making you feel like you've crashed into a huge truck. So while oxygen is always with us, giving us life, it's important to appreciate its delicate balance. Don't put on your special breathing gear. Also, we wouldn't be the only creatures to suffer from this oxygen extravaganza. Mammals, for example, will struggle to adapt to these extreme levels. The balance of power among species will change drastically, and winners and losers will fight for survival in a world that's spinning out of control. And we'll need stronger shelters to deal with these gigantic animals. We'll have to stay nimble and avoid danger. Amidst all the chaos, there will be astonishing adaptations. Birds will fly higher than ever before, reaching heights that would amaze even the clouds. Also, get ready for more natural disasters and delicate ecosystems hanging in the balance. Fires will start quickly and rage fiercely, making wildfires a constant threat. Even a small spark from a campfire could cause disaster. We'll need to rethink our cooking and heating methods to stay safe in this oxygen-filled world. But let's not forget the other side of the oxygen story. If we had a planet with low oxygen, only around 15%, we would face a completely different struggle. Every breath would be difficult, leaving us tired and struggling for air. Physical activity would become extremely hard, and our memory and focus would suffer. So let's be grateful for the oxygen levels we have now. They're the perfect balance for us to thrive. In this exhilarating journey through an oxygen-rich world, We've experienced breathtaking wonders and discovered the delicate balance of our planet. Let's cherish the magic in every breath, respect the interplay of oxygen and life, and embrace the thrill of this remarkable ride called life. You wake up, gasping for air, struggling to peel yourself from your bed. When you do manage to get your feet on the ground, it feels like they're glued down tight. You're twice as heavy. It feels like you're carrying another you on your shoulders all day long. Well, congratulations. You've woken up on an Earth where uncontrolled experiments with dark matter have doubled the force of gravity. Mass panic happens when over 8,000 aircraft fall as soon as the gravity spikes, crashing into buildings, forests, and oceans. And that's because airplanes suddenly lost the balance between the pull of gravity and the lift force necessary to keep them cruising. Pilots did attempt to save their planes, but GPS failed as satellites swiftly moved. After a month, humans begin to look more and more like chimps. Bones are getting thicker, and the immense force constantly pulling people down is squashing their spines, making everybody bend over. People start figuring out that walking ape-style on all fours helps with better balance and stability. And that becomes a big deal, since even tripping over a tiny rock could lead to a nasty fracture. 
Falls not only get more intense due to the extra forces on bones and joints, but they also happen faster. Gravity's pull doubles the acceleration force, increasing it from 32 feet per second to 64 feet per second. Your house is not a safe place anymore. Old buildings and bridges all over the world are now collapsing. Inside those still standing, residents get the scary feeling that the whole place is shaking, and cracks start showing up everywhere. It's dangerous to stay inside houses, as roofs are now twice their usual weight, and any rain or snow also feels twice as heavy. Car alarms are constantly going off because tree branches keep falling all over the place. Most trees simply can't bear the weight of gravity, and only strong and small plants survive, like cactuses and succulents. Six months after the sudden change, supermarkets have a sinister vibe going on, with shelves nearly empty and people arguing over the last loaf of bread. You get frustrated to see that your favorite Japanese restaurant is now five times more expensive. And it's not just about salmon prices. It's rice that has become a rare luxury item, since the gravity boost has messed up the photosynthesis process, and the seeds are taking too long to grow. On the flip side, carrots are now cheaper than ever. They're sprouting and growing at lightning speed. People start eating so many carrots that human skin now has an orange glow from all that extra beta-carotene. Farmers are getting creative, using artificial supports to keep plants like tomatoes and corn on their feet. But even with all their efforts, it's hard to get a good harvest. Summer has arrived, and even your air conditioner can't relieve the unbearable heat. A sudden change in gravity disrupted Earth's orbit around the Sun, pushing it into a new, tighter elliptical path. Earth now passes much closer to the Sun than it used to, making your sunscreen simply surrender. The Moon's orbit has also had some dramatic changes, leading to more dangerous and extreme tide patterns. High tides are now higher, and low tides are lower. The shift has also triggered widespread volcanic eruptions and earthquakes on an unprecedented scale. Earth's crust starts to rupture across vast areas, unleashing planet-wide lava flows so intense that living on Venus begins to sound like a pretty good idea. Five years later, people notice that puppies are begging for food twice as much, but they are taking more time to grow. Breeds like beagles look thinner, and their leg bones are getting heavier. Even insects, such as locusts, now have thicker hind legs to keep those jumps going. Sea creatures are being crushed by the much greater weight of the water around them. That's not a big deal for animals used to deep ocean pressures, like the anglerfish. But crabs and lobsters are really struggling since they live in shallow waters. Sloths and monkeys develop a stronger grip so they won't fall off trees. For carnivorous animals living in jungles or savannas, life is a real challenge because any animal the size of a wolf or bigger can't run without breaking a leg. Large predators like lionesses are starving because they can't move fast enough to catch their prey. Tall trees like palms and pines also go through evolutionary changes. They get beefier trunks and only grow about half as tall as usual. This way, water and nutrients can travel from the ground up to their leaves without struggling against gravity so badly. Ten years have passed since gravity increased. Airlines have finally made changes to prevent commercial flights from nosediving. The wings of airplanes are now longer. Pilots have learned to fly at altitudes twice as high and flight speed has increased by 41%. To avoid people getting extremely nauseated and dizzy during takeoffs and landings, seats are now fully horizontal, like first-class bed-like setups, specially designed to minimize the nasty effects of gravity times two. Flight attendants are trained to raise the seat at the passenger's feet after they pass out, so that blood can return to their head. The thing is, when gravity gets a power boost, it yanks your blood down to your feet and hands even more than usual, making your heart work extra hard to pump that blood around, especially to your head. 50 years have passed. Women in their 30s look like they are 60. Higher gravity decreases collagen synthesis, so even though they're still young, they're dealing with more wrinkles and fine lines, and their skin has already lost a big part of its elasticity. Wounds as small as a pimple pop or a paper cut also take much more time to heal. 
So people are excited about the creation of a Band-Aid made from fish skin from cod or tilapia that promotes local blood circulation and speeds up the healing process. People have also got used to wear exoskeletons made of titanium, which support and enhance the wearer's strength. This technology features cool joints of the places that copy humans' natural movements, giving people more flexibility and letting them move around more easily. Prototypes of personal flying devices start popping up after 100 years. The gray flyer is like a jetpack made of carbon nanotubes, making the structure strong without adding much weight. Instead of using fuel for propulsion, the device has these super-thin but high-tech solar panels. Investors are still not sure if humans could fly long distances with it, but the gray flyer definitely can help people tackle tasks that have become almost impossible, like climbing a mountain or grabbing something from the attic. Things at the gym are pretty different, too. The anti-gravity treadmill is a favorite among fitness enthusiasts because it uses air pressure to lift users, reducing the discomfort of gravity while running. People can also lift weights in booths when the gravity settings are customized. When training with G-Force set at three or four times the new normal, muscles get stronger, making double gravity seem more bearable. However, the maximum set is 4.6, otherwise bones might crack. Over 500 years have passed. Thanks to these amazing technological creations, humans can now handle and establish colonies in other parts of the universe. A popular choice for family vacations is Kepler-452b, a planet about 60% larger than Earth, orbiting in the habitable zone of a sun-like star. Kids especially like that place, as oceans have been discovered and hotels have been built near rocky beaches. On the other hand, Traveling to places in the universe with lighter gravity is like going to an oasis of tranquility. So Mars and the Moon have become known for amazing yoga retreats. With their gravitational forces much weaker, people can breathe more easily there and move around with more freedom. Keep in mind that these trips are expensive, so you might want to start saving up now. A magnitude 15 earthquake has the potential to completely destroy our planet and evaporate all the water in a matter of seconds, leaving Earth uninhabitable. Over half a million earthquakes happen annually, but none have a magnitude of 15. 90% of quakes occur in the terrifying Ring of Fire zone located around the Pacific Ocean. The ground there is like jello. It shakes almost constantly. The most powerful earthquake to have ever struck Earth had a magnitude of 9.5. That much power can lengthen or shorten the day. But there's probably an earthquake in the confines of your own home now caused by a speck of dust landing on a table. But it has a power of negative 15 magnitudes. Earthquakes happen when tectonic plates move. They're like Lego pieces that are not properly secured, and when they move up, down or hit one another, the ground also moves, triggering earthquakes. This tectonic energy acts like a battery. It stores energy for a long time, up to 500 years. When this stored energy is released in a sudden burst, the consequences are horrifying. Even the strongest structures submit to this relentless force that leaves a trail of destruction in its path. In some instances, earthquakes can even trigger tsunamis amplifying the chaos. Such a crazy amount of power can split the ground open and cause severe damage. The strength of an earthquake is measured by the Richter scale, but now it's being replaced by the moment magnitude scale. When there's an earthquake, we hear about how strong it is. It's usually from 1 to 10. Luckily, we haven't had a Richter scale earthquake yet. The most powerful earthquake to have ever happened in modern history occurred in Chile in the 60s. It was around 9.5 on the Richter scale, and it altered Earth's rotation and messed up the length of the day by around 2 milliseconds. It also triggered a massive tsunami and affected a vast area of 155,000 square miles. The Richter scale doesn't actually have a limit. Still, anything above 25 doesn't need measuring because if that ever happened, we would simply turn into dust and nobody would care to measure this disaster. As we said, the strongest earthquake had a magnitude of 9.5.
If this magnitude had been just 0.5 stronger, it would have created a ruptured line 2,174 miles long. That is almost seven times the size of Wyoming. A magnitude 11 earthquake would create a crack halfway around the world. Massive tsunamis would hit coastal areas, destroying everything, and Earth would get into a massive environmental crisis. If you love hiking, you would have new mountains to explore, created by the terrifying earthquake. Even the temperature would increase because of volcanic eruptions and the resulting greenhouse gases. It would turn our planet into a hot oven. The safest places would be far away from any buildings, seas, oceans, and mountains where there would be a low chance of a landslide. Countries unprepared for earthquakes would be totally destroyed, and cities would turn into piles of rubble and dust. Going up on the Richter scale would only make things worse. But don't worry, an earthquake of that power is impossible. Earth's crust doesn't have enough energy to produce such earthquakes. But there is something that has much more power and can produce mega earthquakes. Asteroids are powerful enough to destroy our planet, as we all know from the dinosaur era. That asteroid was around 6 miles long and it caused massive damage to the planet. It triggered earthquakes that shook the ground constantly for months. These terrifying quakes were about 50,000 times stronger than the Chile earthquake. They also triggered a tsunami that was 30,000 times more powerful than the Indian Ocean tsunami. And the latter was one of the most devastating tsunamis to have ever struck Earth. The earthquakes caused by the asteroid had a magnitude of 11, making it the most powerful and scariest natural disaster ever. And let's hope it stays that way. The Indian Ocean tsunami affected only certain areas of the world. Meanwhile, the asteroid tsunami affected every part of the world and had 33-foot-tall waves. Even if you had traveled to the most remote place on Earth, you wouldn't have been able to hide from this Grim Reaper. A 15-magnitude earthquake wouldn't be 15% stronger than the Chile earthquake. The scale doesn't work like that. It would be around 100 million times more powerful than a 9.5-magnitude quake. It could make all the water on Earth evaporate leaving us devastated and without any H2O to survive. All ecosystems would collapse, all food chains would be broken, and only some super strong bacteria would probably survive the impossible. That is only a fraction of the frightening things that could happen. The ocean is like the AC for our planet. Without it, Earth would be super hot. The ocean also serves as a shield from the sun's powerful rays. It acts as a heat absorber and cools Earth. Scientists think that the most dangerous thing would be the inability of Earth's crust to survive the violent shakes of the 15-magnitude earthquake. If our planet miraculously survived and didn't turn into dust, there would be massive openings in its crust. The ground would become gelatinous. It would randomly move up, down, left and right, and no building would survive that. Our civilization would be brought back to the Stonehenge era. Tectonic movements like this are devastating. A similar thing happened in Japan when tectonic plates moved 165 feet from each other and then snapped back together, creating a 9-magnitude earthquake. No place on Earth is immune to this bone-chilling natural phenomenon. Still, certain places have higher chances of being destroyed than others, like the Ring of Fire, where 90% of earthquakes happen. This is a place where earthquakes are almost everyday occurrences. The Ring of Fire is located in the Pacific Ocean. It forms a ring around the continents that surround the Pacific. There, several tectonic plates meet, creating highly unstable ground. To make the problem much more terrifying, 75% of active volcanoes are located in this area. 90% of dormant volcanoes are also there, making this place extremely dangerous. Scientists carefully study this region to find a way to predict when the next earthquake might strike. The Ring of Fire is not the only place at risk of earthquakes. In California, along the San Andreas fault line, two tectonic plates have been storing power for more than 200 years. The San Andreas Fault is 715 miles long and has the potential for a massive earthquake. This region has its fear of violent earthquakes like the one that happened in San Francisco in 1906. It had a magnitude of 7.8 on the Richter scale. 
Scientists' predictions are terrifying. They say that the chance of a 6.7 magnitude earthquake is very high in the area. If all hell starts to break loose, you should know how to survive. Avoid anything that might fall on you, like windows, closets, or unstable ceilings. The official phrase from emergency experts is, drop, cover, and hold on. Stay low to the ground, hide under something stable like a table, and remain there until the shaking stops. Make sure to stay in your shelter for another minute or two, just in case there are aftershocks or loose debris. Use your nose and smell for gas. If you do smell it, don't turn the lights on or do anything that might ignite it. Stay strong and be safe. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.